So this is our main rig that we will keep at home forever and ever. So you guys probably saw a few videos um, previously about setting up our big rig at a remote observatory. So we decided to do this because we want to keep a much uh, easier setup, a smaller and more beginner friendly setup at home for most of the videos. So uh, luckily we'll be able to use this setup for pretty much everything now. And, at uh, home in the backyard, out on the field. Yeah, everywhere. Mm. Uh, and use this beginner setup for most of the videos, which I think is more interesting than always using like crazy mounts and crazy telescopes. So, Finally, we're doing what we say. <laughs> back to we're the basics. Going back to what we know and being professionals at it. And so we're going to go over this rig really quick. Okay, so here we have the telescope, which is the Ascar FRA 500, which is f 5.6. But because we have the reducer slash flattener here, it uh, makes it faster at f 3.9 and also wider. So it's a perfect wide field telescope and uh, I, I love this so much. The, I think the 500 coupled with the uh, reducer here is a great combo for wide field imaging. Love her. And also we have our new mount, which is the AM5 from ZWO, which is so cool. Does not have a counterweight, lightweight, portable. She's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect to carry in and out of the backyard or desert anywhere. And then we have the camera here. So we have two cameras at home. We have this QHY 600C full frame camera. And we also have the ASI 2600MC. So they're both color cameras. Uh, the main difference is this one, the QHY is full oh, frame. frame. This one is APS-C, so it's crop sensor. Um, so we can you know, change the camera depending on what the target is, but for this wide field setup, um, most of the time we'll be using the full frame camera. And then because it's a color camera, we have a filter for nebulae. So the filter we have, we also have two filters, uh, mostly because we're not really sure which one to use just yet. We have the Optolong L Ultimate, which is three nanometers. And we have the Ascar six nanometer uh, dual band color magic filter. So they're both dual band narrow band filters the question is which one is best. So we're currently trying both of them. We had a review about the Ultimate already, and now we can review about this more affordable uh, six nanometer filter here, which is also great and also no halos. So we'll see which one is best after uh, a few weeks. The other thing that we have is our guide scope that is attached right here on the side. But if we want to, we can also use this, but it only works with crop sensor cameras. Um, but for the most part, we're using this full frame one. So we just leave the guide scope like attached. Yeah, it's a bit bulky and heavy, but it's just easier to keep it on and just it does um, not catch too much. The OAG would only work with a uh, APS-C camera because it's kind of small, so we'll just keep the guide scope on for now. Uh, next, we have the SI Air. So this one, even though it doesn't really work with QHY cameras, we still are able to use the power. And all you have to worry about is just one USB cable. And this one, we plug it in to, uh, I, I taped, a USB pub uh, under the uh, SI, SI Air, so Air with Velcro. we have easy access to USB ports here. Right. So it's perfectly fine. Uh, we have an EAF, which is also from ZWO. It's an electronic autofocuser. So of course we use that to help us, you know, easily do our focusing. Uh, yeah, this is our uh, main rig for now. So very simple, very portable, very small and lightweight. And we love this rig. Pick it up, Antoine. Show yeah, the people. Very simple. Show the people. <gasps> Super easy. All right, so we're going to go over the Heart Nebula on Sika Safari for a bit, just so we know what to expect before we image it. Before that, we um, have a lot of books in our little library here uh, on astronomy and astrophotography. And we have one more that we're adding to that, which is the Night Sky Almanac. And it is a 2023 edition, which is very cool and full of a lot of useful information. There's some cool hand sky measurements, some graphs about the stars, and I think even cooler than that, meteor showers in 2023. So things to look forward to, and it's a month by month guide about what's gonna happen in the Northern Hemisphere, which is very cool. There's like a, a calendar of the, lunar um, cycle um, and it even has the Messier catalog in the back which is very very fun and it's just a really neat guide to have with uh, just maps of the sky so you really can't be lost and you'll have something to you know look forward to each 
month. Yes, so this comes out every single year, uh, updated uh, for each year with all new events. Uh, and I love having this because you have a month by month uh, walkthrough of what's available in the sky right now. And the good thing about you know, this specific book is that the targets listed in there are not just for visuals, they're also great targets for astrophotography. So they're perfect for imaging as well. So if you're a beginner and have no idea what to image, uh, you can just open up the monthly uh, section here and you can find the target easily. And same for the, the moon phases. I love having this because you can just go through the month of your choice and quickly see the uh, current moon phase and when to expect the next new moon. So this is very simple. You don't have to go online or on an app to find the moon phase. You can just open up the page All on hand. And, and see it there. So I think it's great to have this each year uh, on your side table for your next telescope or whatever and take it with you on the field if you need to and have a quick reference guide on what to image and uh, the current moon phase. So I'll have the link below if you want to check it out. This book is by Nicole Mortellaro, who also writes other books that are really awesome that you should check out. Awesome. All right, so now let's go and see what the Hort Nebula is going to look like in our framing and kind of what to expect in terms of timing in the sky. Turn around. Uh, so the Hort Nebula is located in Cassiopeia right here, not far from the double cluster as well as M103. And uh, the Sol Nebula, those two are often captured together, uh, actually. Now, with our display here, with our uh, FRA500 uh, and reducer, we technically could include both of them, but because we're using a filter and then a full frame camera, I think we'll have some veneering that we'll have to crop anyway. So we'll probably just focus on the hard Nebula. It's too easy. It's too easy. The distance is 7,500 light years away, crazy, and it has a magnitude of 18.3. The Hart Nebula was discovered in 1787, a long, long time ago, and it is about five times the size of our lovely, lovely moon. Most stars are formed in the heart's center, so would we consider this a star nursery? <laughs> Yeah, look, <laughs> all these stars here, there's like kind of like a cluster here of stars and they're all like new stars being born, which is crazy. It's all in the center, which is why the nebula is so bright uh, over here and then it extends. But yeah, um, let's get this captured tonight and um, see if we get some good results. We'll try to get a few hours, like at least two or three nights for sure. All right, so I am now using the AnyDesk software to kind of control the laptop in the backyard from inside the house. So here, I'm just gonna show you what the framing is like. So this is what I selected earlier. This is going to be our framing. So as you can see, the heart nebula on one side here, and then all the faint gas on the other side. So it won't be centered, but at least we'll have so much gas, hopefully, here uh, with two or three nights worth of data. But this is the target right now and um, we'll be showing you the result in just a few seconds. I made sure my angle was correct by using Nina's manual rotator feature and then launched all the images. We spent a total of four nights on this target and ended up with 25 hours of data. We shot this target in the past and with a similar telescope, but back then we had no idea about all the gas expelling from one side, and so the target was centered dead on. The data was very fun to process. I removed the stars, brought out as much details as possible, played with the colors, and then re-added the stars. Stars from a dual band filter don't have natural colors, so the image looks way better starless, but it still looks okay overall. And here is the final image, 25 hours on the Hart Nebula, not centered on purpose. This is using a beginner telescope, color camera, and dual band filter. We are very happy with this home rig. It is perfect to use both for the backyard and for traveling in the desert. I just hope we won't be tempted to go back to full mono and stay happy with a dual band filter for a long while. We hope you like this image and we'll see you guys next time. Class guys. <laughs>